A warm good afternoon and Jai Hind, dear children. As promised, today I'll be sharing the explanations wherever needed, and you can just jot down the essentials of it. Okay. So, uh, in my last video, I had, you know, narrated the whole story, the lost child, written by Mulk Raj Anand. Um, the author has beautifully talked about the essence of, uh, you know, um, how a fair looks like. Uh, he has portrayed it in, a, in such a beautiful manner that one can easily visualize oneself being a part of the fair. And uh, at the same time has also taken care of all the nitty gritties, all the essential elements which are found in a fair. And how a small child gets attracted to all uh, the things which are on the display, may it be the sweet meat uh, hawker, or may it be the balloon seller, or maybe even the snake charmer, okay? So, um, and at the same time, how parents, you know, uh, manage to keep their children um, in that mood that whatever uh, is essential for the children would be provided and how the frivolous expenditure can be curtailed. And, you know, in this whole story, um, the author has also um, thrown light how the child is aware of the fact um, at the, you know, um, uh, at places where, uh, I mean, how the probable reactions would be for of his parents, supposing if he craves for the barfi. Okay, so uh, I hope whatever I would be sharing today would be fruitful for all of you. So you can just have a look at it and you can also jot it down. Okay, so here I go. Uh, the Lost Child is a story of a small child who gets lost in a fair. He had gone with his parents to the fair, but loses them when he gets engrossed in looking at a roundabout swing. The story highlights the bond of love and affection that the child shares with his parents. Before losing them, he had been demanding various things like sweets, balloons, garlands, then, uh, you know, uh, having a ride on the roller coaster, etc. So once he loses his parents, he's picked up by a stranger. The stranger tries to uh, solace the, you know, pacify the child by offering him all those things which he wanted, which he craved for from his parents. But eventually the child loses his parents and does not want them anymore. And what he uh, wants was his parents whom he had lost in the fair. Okay, so uh, it was a festival of spring from the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. So emerged means came out, so you can underline. Brimming over means to be full of something. All right. Uh, okay, so these are the two words which you need to take care. Now, the story is set up in the spring season as the winter season had just ended. All the people had come out of their houses. They were cheerful as the cold weather uh, was no more. People conveyed through different modes, uh, like they were on foot. Some of them also came through horses and bamboo carts and bullock carts were there, were seen in the fair. A little child was accompanied by his parents. He ran very excitedly and often banged him into his father's legs and he was full of life, energy, excitement and laughter. Come child, come, called his parents as he lagged behind, fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way. Lagged behind means was left behind, fascinated by, it's very simple. Uh, you know, one gets attracted to, um, then lined the way means were set up along the way. Okay, 
now let's move on the child was attracted to the toys which were displayed at the various stalls as he would be left behind his parents would you know keep on calling him so that he gets distracted and comes back to his parents um then uh, you know uh, he sent he uh, seems to be very obedient when his parents used to call he used to simply run his eyes but still kept on lingering on the receding toys as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire of his heart even though he knew that the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes and all. So he was aware of the reactions of his parents. Now lingering means which lasts for a longer period of time. Receding means left behind as he walked ahead. Suppress to put an end to or to stop something. Cold means without any emotions, without any feelings, without any friendliness in your feelings so the child was pretty obedient would walk towards them on being called but his eyes would keep on looking at the toys which he wanted as he reached them he couldn't control his desire to buy a toy he was familiar you know uh, regarding the uh, reaction which he would receive from his parents he knew in his heart of hearts the cold stare which would definitely indicate the denial by the toy the child knew the feelings which would be uh, you know showcased to him i want that toy he pleaded the child was unable to control his desire any longer he said that he wanted to buy the toy now his father looked at him with those red ogling eyes now tyrant means a cruel and an oppressive ruler so definitely here you know uh indian society being a male dominant uh chauvinistic um family so the male member is the boss of the house the master of the house so whatever the master needs to say everybody is expected to follow it and same goes the rule here if uh, the father had shown his eyes so that means that the child could not ask anymore the father's eyes grew red with anger he looked at the child just like a cruel ruler who was trying to oppress him now uh it was his mother's turn then the mama says look child what is before you you know the mother tries to become very uh tender very loving and caring so the mother became emotional due to the cheerful mood lovingly she you know uh, guided her child to another place and asked him to see what was in front of him okay so now in the next paragraph uh, the author talks about the beauty of the dragonflies the groves okay uh, the field with which had mustard flowers and um, just the beauty which was around the fair the child looked at them as they flew around the child was mesmerized by uh, you know by looking at those insects the black bees the butterflies the dragonflies when one of them sat somewhere he just you know uh, tried to chase and catch them but the tiny creatures would uh, fly away the very next moment so then the mother calls out and he again follows the footsteps and you know uh, runs um, along with his parents so now in the later uh, paragraph the child towards you know ra runs towards his parents he walked next to them but after few steps he again stops to see the insects who were coming out of the soil and then again his parents would call him okay uh, then they sat next to a well under uh, the shady trees now the child again you know runs and joins a shower of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the grove and forgetting his parents he began to gather the raining petals in his hands but uh, lol 
He heard the cooing of doves and ran towards his parents, shouting, the dove, the dove, the raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. So now starts the climax of the story. Now comes the, you know, the, what do I say? The, um, the theme that is the lost child, how the child uh, loses his parents and gets lost in the grove. So now he, uh, what he's doing is he uh, starts chasing the doves and uh, he gets very excited to see them. And he, in this process, the petals from his hand starts falling down, okay? And then what happens? He tends to forget about his parents and he tends to forget that he was there with his parents. The parents called the child who was running and playing around a banyan tree. They lifted him and walked down a narrow twisting lane through which they crossed the mustard field. And then they reached the fair. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs converging to the whirlpool of the fair. Throngs means huge crowds. Converging means, you know, gathering coming together and then forming a crowd kind of a gathering. So as they were about to reach the fair, the child saw huge crowds of people walking from everywhere, you know, in all the direction towards the fair. The dense crowd scared him and he stepped back for a while. But the very next moment, he again got attracted to the mind-boggling crowd because he was a small child, you know, and after all, uh, Going into a fair was something which held a lot of excitement in him. Okay. And he never had been a part of such crowd. All right. So as you can see, this was the sweet meat seller who was selling all the delicacies, all types of sweets, you know, gulab jamuns, rasgullas, jalebis and whatnot. And his favorite was parfi. Okay, so at the entrance, he found these uh, things to be sold and he was totally, you know, his mouth watered when he sighed, when he looked at his burfi. It was as if, you know, the burfis were calling him that, you know, you should come and take lots and lots of burfis. He expressed his desire. But then again, he knew that his request would be refuted by his parents, would not be granted. They would say that he was greedy for the burfi, as he did not expect that his demand would be fulfilled. So again, what did he do? He walked further. Now, next stoppage was the flower seller. Okay, so uh, this flower seller, as you can see, you know, although this picture is uh, kind of a clip art image, if I'm not wrong, but we can understand that he is a flower seller. So here what happens, he thinks of buying flowers, kulmohas. Kulmohas are very beautiful flowers. Okay, so he wanted to have one, but then, uh, you know, again, the same thing happened. He knew in his heart of hearts that he won't, his desire won't be fulfilled. So uh, he thought that his parents would, you know, tell, tell him that, oh gosh, that was so cheap of him to ask for the flowers. So again, he just uh, went ahead uh, without expecting a reply from his parents. So now the third stoppage was when uh, he saw a man uh, you know, selling uh, colorful rainbows of uh, various colors. I mean, it was a cornucopia of balloons of different colors and they were flying. So it was very beautiful to look at. Okay, so uh, he stopped there and then he just, you know, felt like seeking for another balloon. But the very next moment, he knew that his parents would not buy. So the reason which he would get was that he was too old to play with them. That means he was big enough and that he should stop playing with the balloons and that the balloons were meant for, you know, tinny mini, the little ones of those KGPG children. 
but these days i guess they also won't uh, get attracted to the balloons rather they would prefer all those uh, video games in which they might come across balloons so you see that is how the change keeps on going so now the next was the snake charmer so this is something which we come across in you know in all the fairs you have the snake charmers you have those uh, uh, playing with the uh, you know, what do you call them uh, the monkeys and all so these are some basic attractions of fair so now when he came near the snake charmer uh, the snake had coiled itself in a basket and had raised its head out. It bent and moved its neck very gracefully, you know, like a swan dancing in the tune of the snake charmer. Now, it seemed as if the music of the flute was heard by the snake's invisible ears and that is how it kept on dancing. Okay, so the boy walked towards the snake charmer, but as his parents had warned him to remain away from unpleasant music played by such men so he knew that again you know his uh, wishes won't be fulfilled so poor him this was also not accepted then he saw the roundabout swing the roller coaster it was full of men women children who were enjoying the ride the boy watched the people on the roundabout and then with a lot of courage expressed his greatest desire to go and uh, enjoy one joy ride. So here also there was no reply. He turned to look at his parents. He looked behind. There was no sign of them. And what happened? Guess this is how he kept on wailing. When his parents did not reply, he turned towards them, he started looking around, but he could not find his parents anywhere in the vicinity. He looked around everywhere, but nowhere his parents could be seen. And look how he was crying. He was crying like anything. Okay, now hither and thither means here and there. So he was looking around uh, in an anticipation that he would find his parents, but his parents were nowhere seen. He was full of fear. Tears started rolling down his cheeks. As you can see here, let me show you. I would just scroll it and... Yeah, so you see, tears were rolling down. Okay, because he his parents were not there with him. And he kept on running around, his turban opened, his clothes became very muddy. Then after some time, he simply gave up. The loud cries turned into mild sobs. He saw people standing and talking and tried to find if his parents were, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in and around in that crowd. But uh, the only thing which he could do was just looking, frantically looking for his parents, okay? Now what happened? The boy ran towards a temple which was crowded with people. He thought that he might, you know, come across his parents there. The crowd was pushing each other as he neared the entrance of the temple. Now here he got very scared of all those strong men who stared, uh, you know, who used to look at people with those ogling eyes and pushed them with their strong and big shoulders. The boy could have been crushed under the feet of the men had his cries not been heard by a man in the crowd. So now this stranger, when he, uh, when he, you know, all of a sudden um, just hears this wailing, the sobbing of this child, so what he did was he came out from the crowd and just reached out the child and, you know, he just picked him up and tried to 
pacify him uh, just to make him calm down but still uh, this child he kept on crying and repeatedly wanted to go to his parents okay now in next paragraph what happens the man tries to relax the child by taking him to the roundabout swing he offered him a ride but the child screamed and kept on weeping loudly that he wanted his parents and he pleaded him to take him to his parents but uh, alas his parents were nowhere seen the man started walking back and forth on the same route which the child had taken so you know uh, he went to the snake charmer again he tried to you know uh, just uh, pacify solace uh, the child's wailing heart and uh, he thought that you know by bringing him to the snake charmer the child would stop crying but then that was not the case the child kept on crying and he wanted to get back to his parents then he uh, just you know took the child to the uh, balloon seller the hawker who was selling the balloons hoping that that might cheer him isn't it he offered a balloon also but he simply turned away and wept for his father okay now the man tried to make the child happy and took him to the flower seller offered flowers offered him a garland but nothing could be you know uh not a single um what do i say and um, not a single instance not a single gift was at all accepted by the child so the child again refused to smell the flowers uh, which he wanted to buy earlier okay so his priority now changed now he was able to you know understand the the importance of having parents because before he was simply you know grudging he was mum uh, grumbling uh, in his heart of hearts that okay if i would crave for this balloon uh, papa would not allow and then so what's the point of desiring for a balloon so he was you know uh, fumbling and mumbling uh, grumbling all these uh, in his heart of hearts so now when he wasn't able to see his parents in and around he was able to understand the importance of having his parents with him okay so he was not at all in the mood of enjoying uh, or maybe you know accepting the gift which was offered which was being offered by the stranger and those gifts those things which he was craving before okay so finally the man took him to the sweet meat seller offered him to buy sweets but still what he wanted was his parents no sweets okay so uh, that was it so now uh, now you know you must have understood what the author wanted to talk about it was quite simple when we have many things we hardly you know we we really don't know the importance of having those gifts we simply take things for granted but when we are not having those things those precious things those precious gifts so that time the absence of those things make us realize the importance of such things like here in the story the gift the 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 most precious gift which the child had was his parents now in this uh, whole story when he kept on craving for the toys the sweets the balloons the garlands uh, even you know just uh, enjoying the snake charmer so these were the things which he kept on craving and at the same time he knew how his parents would react so he was aware of that but he was not aware of the fact that if god forbid if he would have lost his parents before do you think would he be able to even crave for those things 
no would be your answer, right? So the moral, the message conveyed by Mulkraj Anand, according to me, is that we should always treasure the gift of having parents, grandparents, our family members. We should all be, always be very grateful. We should be very happy. We should take care of them rather than being always demanding. Okay, so let's not demand that much and let's treasure whatever we have so that we can spend more time, more fruitful and quality time with such precious people like our parents, like our grandparents, like our family members. So I would like to stop here at this point. In our next class, we would definitely discuss the question answers. Until then, Keep learning and yes, go through the story once again. I'm sure you would enjoy it. Take care. Thank you and share him.